So I've lied to you. I do actually own a bit of Pile of Shame. I've got some unfinished Dwarf Slayers for my Age of Sigmar army. There's not many left to do and it wouldn't take me very long. But the one thing that I'm a bit annoyed about is my art collection. I bought this for Kings of War and I've never done anything with it because of a rules change. But when Crippled God Foundry got in contact with me and about their road of madness, this model really stood out to me and this is the catalyst which is going to drive me to get my arcs done. Now this road to madness, it's their one year anniversary for Crippling God. So they're offering quite a lot on this month's patron. Starting with 15 detailed humanoid miniatures like bandit gang and merchant groups, eight detailed vehicles, which I'm going to use with my orcs. And they also offer a load of different types of animals, vehicles. They've got this massive war giant, which I'm printing now, which is pretty epic. And also they offer all the bases to fit the miniature theme and everything else. They all come pre-supported, as I've said, for easy fitting. And you get loads in the welcome pack. You can join the Discord group. And there's also discounts to my mini factory and stuff like that as well. So do check all the links to Crippled God Foundry and show all your support below. Now this model was quite a mammoth task, pardon the pun. It was three full large print beds, which took quite a while to do. I, I took a, three print beds at about 14 to 16 hours each. Um, the reason I did that is I lowered the print uh, lift height because with it being so big and quite heavy I don't want it tearing and delaminating. Now one thing that I was kind of worried about with this print with it being quite big and quite a, a heavy model is the supports were a lot thicker than I'm used to seeing on a lot of models. Now I thought this was going to make a lot of really nasty scarring and be a pain to remove the supports. It turns out after cleaning it, which again that was a task trying to get it all in, just the hot water trick, even on these large supports, they just peeled off with ease and left minimal scarring. And how the model's been supported, most of the bits that was scarred was on the bits that you glued together, so it wasn't an issue. So all my worries went away, as in I was looking really forward to painting this model after that. Apart from I couldn't paint it at work because followers of the channel will know that uh, I broke a load of my camera gear in the video one before last and I'd just like to thank everybody that helped out putting towards the, the repairs of the gear I raised half the money and that's just absolutely amazing guys so thank you very much. Now once I got this home and uh, I started looking at it I thought I'd give it a bit of a clean off and remove any sort of alcohol splashes or like what, thinned resin that had cured. And I was, I was cleaning it and thinking, why the hell am I picking stuff out from the bottom and in between the fur that I'm never going to see? I don't know why I did this, but I did. And the one thing that I was really happy about is some resin prints tend to not go together very well. And this model went together so, so well. Till I realised that something had gone wrong. A few of you eagle-eyed 3D printer pros out there might have realised something that went wrong. Now, when you're watching this time-lapse back, watch what happens when I've topped the resin up. It, it seems to detach it from the supports and then it droops. It caused such a subtle warp on the model. Now this is my fault for not printing enough resin in and I thought shall I reprint this part of the model and I thought you know what I'd just do like anybody else do let's just fill it and carry on. I'm not much of a sculptor however this warp did push every part out of sync so the gap was about what 8 to 10 millimeters so it did require quite about half a stick of milliput to fix this up uh, this is not the model's fault this is yeah, it's a misprint uh, however i really enjoyed saving it and i'm happy i have saved it because i've i've learned a little bit and I need to print another two of these for my army for Kings of War because I want three fight wagons. These are going to represent fight wagons. Now, painting them and how I'm going to go about this whole uh, Kings of War force is I don't want to be painting anything to a massively high standard because any anybody that knows any army 
as soon as you start painting to a high standard, you're never going to finish it. So I wanted a paint scheme that worked and it were pretty quick and pretty simple. So I hit it with some Zenithal Primes with the Primer Tins and then I'm going to put the base down with my uh, airbrush. I've been using this uh, Sparmax airbrush for quite a while now and this is the 0.2 needled version. And the reason why I like using such a fine needle is when I'm airbrushing, whether that be with contrast or whatever, it means that when you come to do like the belts and smaller details which you use in a different colour, I can tend to cut in there and control it quite well and not have to tidy much up with a brush. Now this is another benefit of using contrast paints for base coat is in because if you overshoot a little bit it's very transparent so the colour doesn't take over the original colour too much. So I like using contrast in the airbrush for that reason and they're a lot stronger than using inks. I find when you airbrush inks onto your model they rub off quite easily and they do take a rather long time to cure and dry properly where acrylics and contrast paints don't. So that's why I prefer using contrast over inks. Now for the colour choice of this mammoth you might be thinking Luke have you gone mental? Um, no what it is is I wanted like a, a grey sort of mammoth with white skin just something that's different um just so when it comes to putting my army together which my orcs are going to be in very tundra setting um so i wanted to do like darkish green to a mid green sort of orcs i might even throw a, a few fleshy colored orcs in there as well uh, very reminiscent of world of warcraft so i'm not going for any sort of accuracy at all of any any sort of law i just want something that looks a little bit different for orcs so that's why i'm going for a gray mammoth with the uh, pale skin now speed painting speed painting is when you've got an army to do and you're trying to defeat that pile of shame even though mine's pile of shame is not that massive it, it still needs that catalyst and that catalyst is something that's puts an idea in my head so i need to get it painted pretty quickly because if i've got the rest of the armor to do i do not want to burn out to do it the way that i paint things quick especially bigger models like this is just base coat wash and dry brush now when i'm doing grays or even browns i always start with a very different base color now with this being a very pale gray i wanted to start with a very blue very dark blue gray so when you start lightening up the colors your shadows stay with a a, a pretty blue cold looking base coat and your paler colors towards the top just show how light its fur actually is and it just adds a bit more color variation because you might not be able to get everywhere with the dry brush and i just prefer using loads of different colored grays rather than just using the same saturated gray all the way through in just different tones and it just looks a bit better um, rather than just using the same pale grays over and over again now Dry brushing everything does seem like a bit of a cop out, but when you're doing an army, it's not about each individual model, it's about how it all looks together. And that's the same as this model. Now I've only just been painting the mammoth, and when I start sticking all the, the different parts on this, this is when it really does start coming together. I've not painted anything with any particular care. I've literally put a few base coats on, whether it be with a dry brush or whether it be with the um, airbrush or whatever. And when you start sticking to this together, you can see how epic it actually is. Start putting the chains on, start putting them little details, and it doesn't matter that I've dry brushed it. You start seeing it as a whole. That's the best thing about speed painting. You don't get that same wow factor, but when you see it all together, you're still pretty happy with yourself and you get a good level of accomplishment. Now this sort of goes against the pile of shame because I actually went out my way and bought some second hand models from a local shop near me. More on that shop later because it's a, it's a treasure. But I bought a handful of Savage Orcs that were just base coated for really cheap because I didn't want to dip into the 60 that I've got that are unbuilt because I need them for the uh, the hordes and the, the, the movement trays. I've, I've got just enough in them boxes. So I bought these and I thought, what's the point of buying new when I can buy some that are already built and base coated? And all you've got to do is uh, chuck a wash on, 
pick out a couple of details to lighten it up and a bit of a dry brush, it looks a bit more coherent and a bit more like you've done it. You stick them on the model and they look all right. Again, not going to win any awards, but I've accomplished something in a very short space of time, which when you're army painting, that takes a lot of stress and it's a great way of just defeating your pile of shame. A lot of people might not like that, but I absolutely love buying second hand models that have got most of the painting done, or even if they're just built, that's one step I don't have to do. So if you do check out any shops that sell second hand miniatures, consider doing it. You can save some money and you can save you the stress of just having boxes of unbuilt stuff in your cupboards. Now what would an orc war mammoth be without a couple of naughty snotlings? I found some snotlings in my cupboard, in my pile of shame that I've been lying about <laughs> and I painted them up very quickly. I just took some green contrast on and a bit of cream and I just stuck them. There's one here with his bum showing, there's another one blowing raspberries at uh, the enemies ahead. They just add a little bit of character to the model and when it finishes off, it looks great. No, it's not going to win any awards, but this is the catalyst to finish them 60 orcs and my uh, orc on wing slasher that I've got to finish and get done for this army. And once I eventually get them done, which hopefully should be in a few months, I'll have another army finished. And that means my pile of shame is getting tinier and tinier and I really enjoy it. So thanks for Crippling God Foundry for giving me that catalyst and go show your support below and all the links and everything to the my mini factory, the patron will be below and you supporting them, it all comes round and it supports me as well guys. If you like what I'm doing, don't forget to check out my shop where you can buy all your scenics to finish off all your lovely miniatures you've got from Cri Crippling God Foundry and there's all the links to any other way you want to support me as well. Thanks a lot guys, I'll see you for the next one. Love, love, love.